What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Chris's Contest Chronicles. This is episode three, I believe. Um, I wanted to take you guys through a nutrition video, essentially. So I just got home from the gym about an hour ago. My man Killian just got here, and I need to make a pre-workout meal. So we're kind of going to start off with that. But the rest of the video is going to entail a grocery haul and then my meal prep for the week and me kind of walking through what my current nutritional approach looks like, what are some of the um, common meals I, I make on a daily or weekly basis to hopefully give you guys some ideas and just give you some insight in regards to what I do. And I also want to speak on how my nutritional approach has changed over the decade. So in 2011, I had a very different prep than in 2013 and 2017 and my current prep right now. So I kind of want to discuss how those changes have occurred and um, provide some content or some information in regards to what you guys can take away. Oh, the Kong is there, you silly boy. Come here. Come here. So yeah, I'm going to start off with a fast digesting carb source. That's going to be the crisp rice cereal. Um, and then I like utilizing a whey protein isolate. Again, this is going to just break down really, really quick. It also maximizes the muscle protein synthetic response because it has all of your essential amino acids. It's super high in leucine. So this is always a go-to post-workout. And because we're going to be running errands and I'm not going to be eating for at least two hours, I'm going to put a little bit of casein in there too because it's a slower digesting protein. Um, and I'm also going to utilize some form of fruit source. Um, right now, today's actually a refeed, so I'm eating 400 grams of carbs and I am pumped about it. So I'm going to utilize something that is really easy to digest like raisins, super low in volume. This is something I typically use while I'm in a calorie surplus or while I'm bulking. It's not something I use like commonly while I'm dieting down because the volume is so low, so it's not satiating. This starchy source is primarily going to break down into glucose and glucose is going to be utilized and stored as muscle glycogen. All right, so glucose is one sugar molecule. Muscle glycogen is essentially a starch carbohydrate, so it's multiple glucose units put together. So when my body breaks this down into glucose, it eventually rebuilds it into glycogen and it gets stored in the muscle. Um, your body has different transport proteins that transport carbohydrates. And there are very specific ones that transport glucose. On a second thought, your body has different transport proteins that transport fructose. And you get fructose from your fruit sources. So that's why I'm adding in some fruit from the raisins. It also makes the digestive process and the absorption and utilization process a bit more efficient. Um, again, fructose is also utilized to kind of replenish liver glycogen more so than mu muscle glycogen. So I would say your starchy carbohydrates are definitely a bit more important for training performance, but they're both serving a very specific purpose. And lastly, I'm, utilize, uh, I'm utilizing a high glycemic carbohydrate like this rice cereal because it's going to spike my insulin levels to a greater degree. And that is going to enhance um, the absorption rate and the glycogen resynthesis rates as well. And it also can help with muscle protein synthesis. So this meal is like my ideal post-workout meal. Um, I added a little bit of salt for my electrolytes to kind of help with rehydration and everything like that. But that's a really quick breakdown um, in regards to why I'm doing what I'm doing. All right, guys. So that post-workout meal is complete. We're about to head to the grocery store, but first I'm going to have my post-workout creatine supplement. Um, Lesion calls theirs, recharge. There are a few other ingredients in here besides creatine, but the primary reason I take it is for the creatine ingredients. Um, however, these additional ingredients just help with absorption and utilization of that. And if you guys aren't familiar with creatine, it is the most well-studied uh, ergogenic aid or supplement in exercise science history by far. There's like over a thousand studies on creatine. The International Society of Sports Nutrition considers it the safest and most effective ergogenic aid in the world. So if you've never taken creatine, I highly recommend. Um, again, this is nothing like steroids. It's, it's not the most powerful thing in the world by any means, but it's definitely something that works and has been proven over and over to be safe and effective. So highly recommend. My 
do a mix of different kinds. The convenient thing about potatoes is when you boil them, the weight doesn't change. A lot of people that like track their macros, it's a pain in the ass because things change between raw weight and cooked weight. And if you want to be like as precise as possible with your numbers, um, you need to know the difference. Um, so boiling your potatoes is fucking great because it doesn't change the weight of it and therefore your nutritional numbers are like spot on um, while taking the headache out of it. So I'm definitely going to get a couple different kinds of potatoes right now. Got to get organized. All right, so I know I'm going to be making multiple staple meals right now. This is something I do usually kind of once a week, kind of twice a week. It's either like Sundays and Wednesdays or just Sundays, and then I start winging it a little bit as the week goes on. Um, but if I cook today, I have enough food usually for at least four days. So. Um, this is going to work out really well. I'm going to start with some staple carbohydrates. I'm going to be boiling these potatoes. I got red potatoes and gold potatoes. My other staple carb source is brown rice and lentils. And I cook these two things together. To me, I view it as like rice and beans. And I always make like my own little chipotle bowl, so to speak. So the rice and lentils cook together. Um, and then I usually add some sort of protein source, some sort of vegetable and like guacamole. And that's just like a delicious bowl concoction that I have all the freaking time. Sometimes I do it with like ground beef like this. Sometimes I do it with chicken. Sometimes I do it with salmon. So the protein changes regularly, but that staple carbohydrate is the brown rice and lentil. So I'm gonna start with that guys. I'll show you how to make it. So the first thing I do guys is I weigh out my lentils and I always do the same exact amount every time. I do 150 grams of lentils and I do 150 grams of brown rice. Let's start with this. These are different kinds of lentils, but it doesn't matter. The macros are exactly the same. The micronutrients are slightly different. Fiber, protein's the same. And I literally just made it. Next week I gotta buy lentils. Didn't buy it this week. All right, so I have 150 grams there. When I do 150 grams, I need three cups of rice. Okay. He's my sous, my sous chef, my assistant. Oh fuck, I stopped looking. I'm staring at River. There's a lot going on. Yeah, look what you did, buddy. Now there's water everywhere. This water's finally boiling. I'm gonna add the 150 grams of lentils into here. Um, I'm gonna let that sit for a little bit. And I do add cumin to the lentils. The reason for that is because any sort of legume can make people gassy and the cumin really helps prevent that. So I add a little bit of cumin to that. Um, it also tastes great. And then I'm going to add 150 grams of brown rice. Okay. And to the rice, I like adding turmeric um, as well as fenugreek. We call this hilde in Arabic. Um, just makes it taste better. Uh, turmeric is also a really strong anti-inflammatory, good for your joints, good for your gut health, can even help lower blood sugar levels, so on and so forth. So I add that to that. This is boiling. Boom, dump it all in. And now I decrease this temperature, not to like a full simmer, but to a low temp. Um, and then maybe in a, like 25 minutes or so, I'll lower it all the way. But I keep it on like three-ish. Um, 
Otherwise, I'm just waiting on this other pot to boil so I could add the potatoes to it. And now I'm gonna get everything else going. So I'm gonna be baking salmon, uh, salmon burgers, super easy, super convenient. Some asparagus, some vegetables, so on and so forth. So let's see what else is on the menu. I'm going to start making my beef, but beforehand, I like sauteing some onion, just for some flavor and texture. At one point I was so anal that I would like weigh out the onion. And I'm like, bro, I'm getting like two carbs for this entire thing. I'm like, it's okay. Let me, let me not, let me not track that. Let me not be a fucking neurotic psycho. So. About your onion. About my onion. Yeah. I let the onion pass, my man, so that's kind of part of the evolution. In the past too, I would like weigh out the ketchup. We're like, okay, you get like three grams of carbs per serving. Now I won't weigh it out, but I might count it. You know, if I use if I use a lot, I'll be like, yeah, okay, I had six extra grams of carbs, or I would like at least take it into consideration, but I used to be like a little bit too neurotic with the weighing out stuff. I'm like, this isn't, this is strange, you know. Um, and I think over time I realized that you're gonna be off by five to 20 grams, even if you think you're perfect, because there could just be discrepancy anyway. So why stress it? All right guys, so this beef is going down. I got two pounds for the week, which doesn't sound like a lot at all and it's not a lot. Um, I usually eat six ounces uh, at a time, sometimes up to eight. Um, but I also eat salmon and chicken and eggs. And I do a ton of whey protein to be total, well, not a ton, but I eat four meals per day. And two of those meals typically my pre and post, a lot of times my pre is like oatmeal and whey and fruit, and my post is like cereal and whey and fruit. So I generally do whey twice per day, and then I generally do an animal, like a whole food animal product twice per day. Um, so this is 93.7, pretty darn lean show you guys how I season this as well. Um, so what I do is I generally take onion powder, which is delicious. And I also like garlic powder, but I think we're out. Let me see, I do a little bit of onion powder. Even though I have fresh onion, I just like this taste a lot. Yeah, garlic powder, I'm freaking out. R.I.P. Um, the secret ingredient that none of you guys can get anywhere is this. And that's because my grandma makes it and it's like 70 different spices. So it tastes absolutely fantastic. I add this to my ground beef all the time. Um, and I don't even know if I mentioned this. I've been doing ground bison um, but Sprouts didn't have that today, and I usually get it from Costco. So I've actually been making ground bison all the time, and for this week, or at least the first few days of this week, I'm going to be eating beef instead. Um, well, the beef I was getting at Costco was 85.15, and it was too fatty. And the bison was just leaner, so I was going with that. And I like the way it cooks a bit more. Like it just cooks differently, tastes a little bit, not better, but different. Like it was a new flavor to my palate where I always would have beef all the time. Yeah, and then this is fire, bro, smell that. Oh shit. This is fucking fire. My wife makes this salt. It's a kosher salt, fresh sage, fresh, uh, fresh rosemary lemon zest, 
garlic, and then we keep it in the fridge. But dude, this is this is a one. Like when we make fillet, we like put this on the entire fillet before we cook it. Like we kind of like marinate it with that and pepper. Oh, it's so fire, bro! Ten out of ten. That could have been so bad, guys. That could have been not only like bad for the food, but a fucking mess in here. We're getting there. All right, so beef is done. Um, doesn't look as appetizing as usual. I usually don't buy the, the beef I got today, but um, this was two pounds worth. So what is that? Generally 32 ounces. Let's see what it comes out to cooked. Um, and obviously I did add the onion and the garlic. So the weight is slightly different because of that. But basically what I need to know is what's this final weight product? because as I mentioned, I generally have like six ounces at a time. So um, I do weigh it out after it's cooked. So I know how much I need to get the appropriate serving. Let's see. Okay, so this looks like it's gonna be 28 ounces, which is actually really simple. Instead of being 32, it's gonna be 28. So that basically means it lost four ounces through the cooking process, through the water. So if I want six ounces uh, of what it was raw, I know I just need to weigh out five ounces and that's the appropriate number for me. So really easy, pretty simple. Um, so yeah, that's that's my beef. My man Killian's gonna try it tonight too. Let's, let's see how it comes out. Um, and I also just added steamed broccoli. I'm just letting this kind of cook in the background. A lot of times I do frozen broccoli, throw it in the microwave. Uh, way more time convenient in my honest opinion, but we had fresh broccoli in the fridge, so I just kind of rode with that. Um, this is done, guys. This is what the rice and lentils look like cooked. It's honestly delicious. I'm gonna mix it up really quick with a spoon, but again, I cooked them at the same time together. Um, I do use brown rice on purpose because it takes longer to cook and lentils take longer to cook. So it just kind of works better this way. If I were to do it with white rice, the rice would just be like really overcooked and the lentils would be underdone. So. You know, you can still make it work, but you'd have to like alter the timing. Like you'd have to let the lentils cook for, you know, 15 minutes and then add the rice to it where this kind of works out perfect. So we'll have some of that that's cooking and this should be done, right, bro? What do you think? This is done. All right, so meal prep is done. Um, it did take a bit longer than usual, I guess because of the filming, to be honest, but what it took us an hour and a half, Killian? or so. Um, so as you guys saw, I, you know, to provide you guys with some insight in regards to what needs to be done, you need to prepare multiple carbohydrate sources for the week, multiple protein sources for the week, and then have some variety of your vegetables. Um, and that's basically what I did today, right? I had asparagus, broccoli, and carrots, as well as boiled potatoes, and um, rice and lentils, and then my protein sources were, um, I did grass-fed beef today, 93.7, as well as the salmon burgers. And obviously if you're using whole food, micronutrient dense sources, that's always better. Um, however, I really have no limitations in my diet right now. Fortunately, I don't, I don't have any food sensitivities per se. Um, I don't have any food allergies. So my diet is, has a larger variety than what has been shown today. Um, for example, some things that are daily staples that you guys didn't see are things like oatmeal um, that literally requires no prep time. I take oatmeal, throw it in a bowl, 
throw it in the microwave, you know, add some water to it, super simple. Um, and other protein sources that I have all the time are whey protein powders. Um, I do a casein from time to time, whole eggs, turkey bacon, and stuff like that. And then my fruit and vegetable um, varies on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, honestly, as frequently as, I, as I'd like. And as fruits and vegetables are kind of seasonal, kind of change what I'm consuming in my diet. So um, that's the gist of it. Currently, my macronutrient intake has been 50 grams of fat, 250 grams of carb, and 225 grams of protein on training days. And then on non-training days, I've been doing 60 grams of fat, only 150 grams of carbs, and protein stays the same at 225. As you guys saw, um, all the foods I made today were whole foods, nutrient-dense foods, right? Um, that's the staple of my diet. I'm not eating a ton of processed foods. I'm not, you know, I do have like um, rice cereal post-workout, but that's basically the extent of like my processed foods. Um, I'm not eating Pop-Tarts. I'm not eating random cookies or, um, you know, English muffins or just like random stuff that have macros on it. I'm not consuming that in my diet right now. Um, again, for multiple reasons, I would rather consume something that is providing me with um, a greater level of micronutrients as well as something that's going to keep me satiated for a longer period of time. Because one of the biggest things to sticking to a diet and adhering to a diet is going to be your satiety. So if you can improve your satiety and decrease your hunger, that is probably going to increase the likelihood of you staying on top of your diet, staying consistent to it. And that's what's giving you the results, right? Like you can do something perfectly for five days, but if you only do it for five days and then fall off the wagon, you're not gonna have long-term results. So you need to find a dieting approach that you can sustain over the long-term. And obviously if this contest prep is 22 plus weeks long, I need to find a nutritional approach that I can sustain and it still works in my lifestyle. Um, so that's currently where I'm at. Uh, something I do feel like it's important to mention, this contest prep, I'm only consuming four meals per day. This is the lowest meal frequency I've ever gone with during a contest prep. In the past, I used to eat a minimum of five meals per day, but oftentimes six times per day. And what I'm finding this time around, um, A, I'm just a bit more busy. So not having to set time away to, to eat, it's just more convenient right now that I don't have to eat five or six times. I only have to eat four. But more importantly, each meal is much larger in caloric serving and also in food volume. So it's actually keeping me fuller for longer. Um, and it's just making life a little bit easier for me. So right now, I usually have a breakfast, a pre-workout, a post-workout, and then I don't even I feel like my post workouts my dinner and then i have like a meal closer to bed around 9 p.m so right now i'm just eating four times per day again this is the lowest meal frequency i've ever done um, i generally have a lot of my clients at five to six meals per day but i do tell them that if four meals fits their lifestyle best that's generally my um, my lowest meal frequency that i go with and yeah just to give you guys some quick context in regards to how my diet has changed over the last decade. My first contest prep in 2011, um, first of all, I only dieted for around eight weeks, but I was on a quote unquote bro diet. I did not provide myself with much flexibility whatsoever. So I was eating a lot of rice, asparagus, and tilapia. Um, fun fact, I haven't had tilapia since 2011 because I ate it every fucking day for eight weeks. And I just can't even stomach it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to smell it. I don't want to eat it. So I haven't had that since 2011. Um, my diet was super simple, very bro, very clean eating. I never fit in anything uh, that I wanted that was off the diet plan. Didn't understand that I could just equate macronutrients or equate calories and everything would be good. In 2013, I was eating um, processed foods a lot more just because I knew I could fit it in. Um, but I should have focused more on micronutrient density at that time. Um, and yeah, I was just having more processed snacks. Satiety wasn't as great, so I was definitely hungrier. Um, and I also recall going super low fat. I got as low as 30 grams per day, whereas right now I basically never go below 50. 
Um, at that point, I would rather reduce my carbohydrate intake. At this point now, I'd rather lower my carbs to create that calorie deficit and keep fats at a bare minimum of 50, just for like hormonal health. Because a lot of people need to realize that your two essential macronutrients are actually fat and protein. Carbohydrate, even though it's our primary fuel source and it's our primary energy source, um, it's actually not essential. So um, rather than having super, super low fat and having some negative hormonal adaptations occur, um, I keep fat at the bare minimum being 50 and reduce my calories from carbs. Um, quick side note, you are gonna have negative hormonal adaptations anyway when you're in a calorie deficit for a long period of time and or you're getting extremely lean for a bodybuilding competition. So it's something you can't afford. Um, and then in 2017, I just pulled up my fitness pal and I was looking at how I approach things. I approach things um, in a really great manner, to be honest, my, my results were great. I was happy with the prep overall, um, but I was a bit too rigid with my tracking. So I just pulled up things like I was tracking my garlic cloves and I was weighing out my ketchup and I was tracking my onions and like things that I'm not actually weighing out and tracking now. Um, and I wasn't giving myself a range. So if I had to hit 225 grams of protein back in 2017, I would adjust my serving sizes on that last meal to ensure I hit everything on the money. And it was psychologically not the greatest thing. Um, so right now I'm being way more flexible. Last thing I'll mention, I'm going out to eat multiple times per week. So it's usually on a weekend um, with the wife and then one day with the family. Um, so my mom's been making food and even though I can't track that as accurately as I track here at the house, I still weigh out those food sources and I'm comfortable enough with that calculation, even though I know it's slightly off, I'm not letting that deter me from not consuming those meals with my family, with my wife, with my friends. So uh, that was cool. You know, this past week, my buddy came into town from Texas, took him out to dinner, had a meal out. And again, I still track the food, but I know it's not 100% accurate. And I'm just, I'm cool with it as long as I'm making progress on a weekly basis and I'm trending in the right direction, I'll keep it moving. Um, maybe closer to the show, you know, if I'm four weeks out, I might stop doing that. But so far, everything's been going well. Um, and that's currently where I'm at. So I hope this was helpful in some sense. Um, if you guys have any nutrition questions, please feel free to let me know. And just to plug in a quick resource that you guys can check out, I do have a phenomenal ebook with my man, Jeff Nippard. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Body Recomposition. And it teaches you exactly how to set up your diet, um, how to optimize your pre and post workout meals for um, performance in the gym and recovery out of the gym and how to manipulate your diet and how to manipulate your diet um, in order to maximize your body composition outcomes. So definitely check that out. And like I said, if you have any questions in the, um, if you have any questions regarding nutrition, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you guys, but I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.